potholes. Mr. Mayor, we've talked about future ways of income. And the one that's missing, which I've raised in the past, is the community infrastructure level. We had a local plan in place, we could have a charging system for it. I know it takes time to get in place, and I know the example I'm going to quote is Cheshire East. Of course, their inspector said, sorry, you want 36,000 new homes, don't complain about it, that's what you're getting. But Cheshire East's budget says that they will get £10.3 million from the community infrastructure levy over the next decade. So I don't want us to miss out on that opportunity. There are some problems, as have been mentioned tonight, about the stability of this council. I'll touch on those towards the end. In our amendment, we talk about getting our house in order, but we also talk about the uncertain times, the need for the senior leadership team and the cabinet to be open with members of the council about the decisions they take regularly, month by month, about managing the budget. We're in a situation of instability now. We're in a situation where the budget that's passed tonight might be unraveled with people with other ideas and other budgets in a few months' time. It's important that all of us have knowledge of what's in the budget. And as a final example, remember those moorland fires in the hot summer? How they smouldered and burnt under the moorland? Wirral is entering into that kind of period, and it's for us as all members to make sure that we contain that damage. Thank you, Councillor Gibbons. So now I open up the debate. Are there any other members who wish to speak? Those that do have up to three minutes each. May I remind you that we have a system of traffic lights here, the green light, which comes on when you have one minute left. You should be in there to conclude your remarks. With that, please, a red light will come on when the minute is up and you should then resume your seat. Thank you. So I will call Councillor Jeanette Williamson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I'll keep my speech quite brief tonight. As Phil said, we're in our ninth year of austerity, and this council has had to find over £200 million worth of savings. There's a chronic underfunding of local government by this Tory government, and the mess of Brexit is unlikely to improve the situation. The members opposite actually voted against our notice of motion last year to call for fairer funding for Wirral. And all the talk of uh, the situation with our party, of course, deflects from the fact that Theresa May has been held to ransom by the hard right Brexiteers who are literally draining the life force out of this country. So, our budgets. I'm really, really pleased to present tonight with Phil a balanced and a socially just budget. This would not be really possible without the hard work of the finance team headed by our director of finance chair who's done an absolutely amazing job under relentless pressure. We then put a massive investment in children's and they we have paid we've paid us back a thousand fold with your stern work in children's which we will be forever grateful for. Thank you. I'm proud that there's no closures. We have our community wealth building strategy which will Look to uplift the local economy by £10 million. It's progressive and it's innovative, something which we need here on the world. I think the proudest thing for me is our council tax discount. So, even Lewis mentioned before about the Labour Party uh, on the world putting up the council tax, completely forgot to mention that actually we've put nearly a million pounds in the budget to reduce the council tax for families and families, individuals on their incomes. That, to me, is the Labour stamp running right through our budgets, and I'm so proud of that. We're going to have to public consultation, and if the residents agree that we should go ahead, then that's what we will do in April 2020. Because what we currently have is a horrible phenomenon called the working poor. We hear the mantra all the time from the, from the opposition members about working one's way out of poverty. That doesn't mean true, does it? Most people using food banks are working. Most people claiming universal credit are also working. We've got the biggest increase in child poverty we've seen in many a year. We've got a chronic housing shortage. We've got cuts to police and fire. 
And all of this is serving to undermine our residents who are not in receipt of decent wages. We seek to help those people with our budgets. So as I said before, I'm proud to deliver a balanced, socially just and a fair budget for residents of Wirral. And this is despite being left to sink or swim by this Tory government. So I, re I commend this government to uh, this budget tonight. Thank you. Councillor David Burgess Joyce. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just really wanted to put it on record in regards to uh, the rather splendid work that I think we'd all agree has been done uh, by a number of people. One of which is uh, Mr. Paul Boyce, who I have immense respect for for the work that he's done on uh, children's services. I apologise for mentioning an officer, but I think I'm allowed, given that it's a positive comment to make, I think he's done tremendous work, and certainly I've worked with him on the children's group, and it's been pretty tremendous. People thank Tom, who's done excellent work chairing it, but I would also like to refer, obviously, to uh, Councillor Mooney, who our politics are different, but our passion for wanting children to be looked after is probably the same, we just have different ways of going about it. Uh, I, I personally think we will miss you as uh, a councillor here, um, and I've always found you to be extremely uh, pleasant, uh, demanding, but pleasant. And most important of all, uh, you're not racist. So that's good. Councillor Ron Abbey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was not going to speak tonight. I was just going to go out quite briefly because this is my last council. Uh, I've been councillor here for 22 years. I've seen many budgets come and go from, from both sides of the chain. Uh, but once again, Councillor Wilson provoked me into making a response. Thank you very much for doing that. But Excellent. I think the maybe issues within the Labour Party, but my God, I sit across here and I watch these people with the malaise within the Tory party. That you're <coughs> constantly in denial. We have Jeffy Hand with uh, Margaret Thatcher talking about managed decline in Merseyside. Well, this government has managed decline across the whole of the country. In metropolitan areas, they actually crucified metropolitan councils day in and day out. When we try and bring a balanced budget forward, <clears throat> this is what the, the, the outcome. And you sit there and you criticise Labour for the good work that they try and do to protect the, the working poor, people who, who, are, who can't be protected uh, but by others who have to protect. By, and you sit there and you criticise and you don't bring up a valid alternative. That's the standing thing in this. The last two years I've sat here and there have been no valid alternative. Under Jeff Green's time, there used to be a whole budget option produced as an alternative. Now we don't get it. You get, that you get something you could write on the back of the postage stamp all the time. And that's the reality of where we are. I just say you need to have an inward look at yourselves on that side of the party. I won't be here to challenge you anymore, but I will still be out there looking in. And by God, if you make a, a, a foot wrong, I'll be there to say something about you uh, in the usual forums and media. But once again, can I thank all the members for the kind words they gave during my recent briefing to my wife. It was much appreciated. Uh, and au revoir, as they say. Thank you.
percent increase in the cattle tax, and they're going to turn around and say, "Well, why is mine going up by five percent then?" Uh, and because the reality is that I think it's about sixteen percent of the, the council tax is being uh, charged by precepts to the, the various precepting authorities over which we have, uh, as I say, minimal control. Um, I, I think it's true to say that it's just Councillor Gilchrist and myself uh, who served uh, among the men, present members of council, who served on the former Merseyside County Council. Um, and of course in those days, the services provided, such as fire and police and culture and highways and so forth, uh, by the County Council, were at least under democratic control until um, Prime Minister Thatcher decided to abolish the counties in 1986. Um, but now, of course, we, we don't have that, uh, that control. And, and I am just concerned, uh, particularly about the role of the Metro Mayor. Um, Mr. Mayor, you're a genuine mayor. Uh, he, um, is, <laughs> he is presiding over this, this budget. The first time he's precepting the, the, the borough and um, city councils uh, for some of the services that he's providing for his, his, uh, his office work. Um, and it seems to me this is a dangerous uh, case of empire building. As I understood it with devolution, power was meant to be devolved from central government to the metro mayors and the funding was going to be devolved too. But now we're finding that funding is being uh, picked up by places such as Wirral, and I think it's a very dangerous precedent. Thank you, Councillor Bray. Councillor Brown Kenny. Thank you, Mr Mayor. We've reached a point where councils will no longer be able to support our residents as they expect, including our most vulnerable let alone help the country to prosper. Councils have shown more than their fair share of austerity and have tried to reduce any impact on residents. But there's only so much they can do and the financial challenges they face are growing. If the government allows the funding gap facing councils and the local services to reach almost £8 billion by the middle of the next decade, then our councils and local services will be damaged beyond recognition. Mr Mayor, I did not write any of those words. I've only just read them out. They were actually spoken by the Conservative Chairman, the Conservative Chairman of the Local Government Association, the person Councillor Gilchrist referred to earlier, Lord Porter. In Will, we've lost more than half of our national grant funding, and the rest, the rest will go in the next 18 months. Now, the Conservative group budget statement today, or objection, I don't think it's actually an alternative budget, but it actually says that the Labour group budget is, and I'll quote Mr Mayor, nothing more than a weak and pathetic attempt to curry favour among the increasingly extreme elements within the ruling Labour Party. Well, I don't know, Mr Mayor, whether people regard me as part of that extreme element within the Labour Party, but I do actually fully support the Labour budget. Since the Tories introduced austerity in 2010, we've been forced to introduce more than, more than a quarter of a billion pound in cuts just in the will. John Macdonald, the Shadow Chancellor, quite rightly has accused this government of using local councils up and down the country as a human shield to drive through its cuts programme. 